much. So a warm welcome to Mr. Joachim Samuelsson, the CEO of Crunchfish. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, I will do it in English. Uh, we have uh, some followers in India. That's why I'm dressed like this today. This is an Indian kurta. The word kurta in Sweden is actually from India, so this is a kurta. And what I'm going to talk about is... Uh, I, I'm going to make you disappointed because I will focus on digital cash, not AI and not uh, augmented reality. Th that I, I only have 15 minutes and I already spent 20 seconds, so I need to talk about this. This is very important. This might be one of your most interesting 15 minutes in your life. Because what we have done in Crunchfish is that we have improved on the internet itself. I claim that we are the most interesting innovation to digital communication since the internet. I worked at Ericsson, you know, back in the uh, back in the days, in the 80s. We we were selling circuit switch networks, and the Americans came along and said that they had something called the internet. We thought it was all a fad, just like Enis Usman, internet is bara en fluga, but it wasn't. It came around and it sort of changed everything, and. That's what I will talk about, because we have actually improved on it. And what I'll do is actually to do it as a, uh, as a little bit of a you know, travel experience. We were in Mumbai two weeks ago, and uh, this is a very epic book here, the Shantaram. And so it begins, this story, as all stories do, do with a woman, a city, and a bit, little bit of luck. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We had luck because we had 15 minutes in Munich to get to the, our flight to Mumbai, and we were 45 minutes late. But we got a German guy, he took us through sort of uh, secret pathways. And Patrick here, who is the CEO of our digital cash subsidiary, he was really worried, particularly for our luggage. But the luggage came. Look at this. German efficiency. We, we just love them. They, they brought the, the luggage to us as well, and we arrived in the Mumbai. And this was my view in the morning, waking up. And I thought it was a sign. Central Bank, it said. I knew that this is not the Central Bank of India, but they've taken the name. So the Central Bank is, yes, a bank of India, but that was my morning view from, I think, 23rd floor over Mumbai. Here we are. First meeting. Look at, I, I have this kurta. It was actually quite interesting because the, the head of the fintech team, he, he did comment on my kurta and he did also mention that this pattern is from his home village in India, which was, I, I didn't know, but I was, that's why I felt I, I need to have it today as, as well. Patrick almost got shot because we took some pictures as tourists and he was at gunpoint. I was filming Patrick and I said, shoot, just to get some good content. No, I didn't. But uh, it, we, we had great fun visiting sort of the Reserve Bank of India and we told them a story that we are uh, about something quite grand. That we have worked with them for a, a year, and I told them that what I'm going to tell you is different from what you know, because you know us for offline payments. And that's certainly been, as a deep tech company, our claim to fame. We are a deep tech company. We do something different. Only dead fish follow the stream. We swim in a different way. We're a deep tech company and we're trying to find ways to do something fundamentally different. This is me and Paul. We celebrated three years ago, a little bit more than three years, in January 2020, because we, th we already then knew we have cracked a huge things for payments, meaning offline payments. We can pay offline. And that would have been very good here in Sweden. I don't know if you saw the news, you've been here, but Swish has been down for two and a half hours, you know, difficult. And this is what we address, this is what we can solve. This is me trying to convince the central banks that there are different ways to actually digital cash, a digitized cash. They have cash today, it's a paper token, and the way they think they're gonna do it is to make that token digital. I say, don't do that. Rather think about the digital money that we already have. You have digital money today, you have it in your bank accounts, and let that behave like cash instead, meaning offline, meaning privacy, meaning inclusive, all that is possible. But don't start with digitize a paper token. We are writing white papers. Uh, this is the first one we did, and here we talk about these design options. 
The top row is the online rail. You can make it token-based. All crypto schemes are token-based, or you can make it account-based, like all the account real-time payment systems. And the CBDCs, central bank digital currency, they can have a choice. I prefer that they will go right, but many of them go sort of on the left side. But then we come down to design choices for the offline side. That's what we do, the offline side. And that's about the security protocol, and it's also about how do you keep it safe? What is the trusted environment? And this is a white paper we're doing with a German expert company called Leapis Advisors. The security protocol is, there's three choices here for that. There is this one about, are we going to get it private or are we going to get surveillance? This is a key question. They asked the Europeans, we want it to be private. And I think we can get privacy by design. So when you go and take out money at an ATM machine, you are transferring from a security protocol in the back end to that you have another security protocol when you have cash. I can pay to Linda here, no one knows that, and then Linda can put the money back and no one recorded I actually gave Linda some cash. We can do the same for, for digital payments if we have a non-native scheme. We should definitely be interoperable. We should definitely also be using rather signatures than encryption. I won't have time to go through this, but we will have on Friday a, work, a webinar that I really recommend. On Thursday, we're going to come out with a white paper about it, and please listen to it. Here's another contrarian view. A lot of our competition think that the only way to keep this safe is to have it in hardware. Basically, it's on a chip. Think of the chip you have on a, on a credit card. That's the only way to keep this safe. But this is the main device that everybody will be using. Everybody will be having smartphones. And you can't get a billion Indians to use the same device. You really need to have a software-based uh, uh, trusted environment. And uh, that's what we're going for. So we have a lot of contrarian views here that we are telling the world about. This is what, how we are positioning ourselves for CBDC, Central Bank Digital Currency, in Sweden, e krona but also for any payment service, like Swish, or in India, as it's called, UPI. That's the same, same as Swish. Oh, back to some traveling pictures. This is Gateway to India in Mumbai, and that's the famous sort of Taj Mahal. And here I am with, the, the, it was us five, three from Sweden, and then Vijay and Gagan, who are our two main reps sort of, of India. We visited Wibmo. Uh, they're sitting in a building called the Wall Street, and obviously they have a full-size bull, just like the Wall Street bull. Uh, this is a, one of the major payment companies in the world uh, delivering a platform for uh, payments. But this is something I, I, I talked about. When internet came along, this is what the American brought. They brought a, a layering of various protocols. In its simplest form, there are four layers. There is the application, there is the transport layer, the internet layer, and then the link layer. And a communication goes through all these layers and it goes up on the other side. That's how it works. I have another slide. And one of the, the payment services of India is UPI, and they put out this lightning fast UPI payments that never fails. And I said, this is a joke. It fails all the time. Anytime a user do not get a connection, anytime that happens, and that happens quite a lot in India, because if you go to the countryside, you don't have data. So it's not true at all. This was a meme that was spread in India. I can't really read it, but it says, if the UPI service continue to be down like this, just like Swish was this morning, I'll, I'll have to start doing dishes at the hotel. Here we are. We are working currently in, in a pilot with the largest bank of India, or the main bank, the main private bank, is HDFC. Here is one of the fastest banks. This is IDFC. These two together are doing a pilot under the supervision of, uh, of the Central Bank of India. And uh, I, I'm meeting here, this is Sunil Karkara. He's sort of the head of products. And uh, we're going to have some interesting stuff uh, together uh, coming out. So what we do here, now we're back again to the application layer, transport layer, internet layer, link layer, is that what typically is the weak link here is that the client, that's what you have on your phone, your app, doesn't get connectivity. So it doesn't matter how robust the internet is. 
if you don't get connectivity. And one thing we add is that, all right, you can't get connectivity. Let's route it over telecom instead, because the telecom is, is there all the time. This is a huge problem. Look at Sweden here. We have young people. They don't have cards. They don't go to ATM machines. They just use Swish. If they are at the big event, the only thing they can do is to call home and say, I can't buy anything because Swish is not working. Please come and get me. Without technology, they could pay because they would pay over telecom. Just like they can call over telecom, they can make the payment using telecom. And we are not a service of our own. We augment, we put our service within any payment uh, application in the world. And we can also connect locally, even if you don't even have telecom connection. Yeah, this is just more technical slides of how this works. And essentially what we've added is that on the green at the end there, a digital cash trusted application. Because what you have on your mobile phone is not safe, but we make it safe by putting it in a software-based trusted environment. This is again a bit of a technical uh, slide, but it, it, it talks about how it actually works, that every layer puts a header in. The, transport, the app layer, the transport layer, IP layer, the link layer. And we also do, but we do it with, with it in another way. We put a signature there, a cryptographic signature. And that is what solves this whole problem here. I was extremely happy during the whole trip. I woke up, though, one morning and I saw this on Twitter. Short crunch fish because of Westerhamnen's hit the po analyse means sort of bogus analysis. And the first thing that came to mind, you know, this is a 40-year-old movie, was this. Go ahead. Make my day. Because I know these guys. They are really serious young guys. They write fantastic reports, and they really go into it. And they're very serious. So this kind of troll on the internet, just not having any respect. I'm sure he hasn't even read it, but he just felt short crunches because of a report like that. We have another report as well. Uh, this is from Emergers, also commission analysis that you can read to understand us uh, a bit more. And what I knew, why I sort of almost smiled to myself, because we announced that the following day in the morning, we were acquiring an Indian payment platform company. And the stock went from 33 to 41 in an hour. So it was up 26%. So I was happy. I really hoped that he had shorted Crunchfish. Make my day. So here we are uh, basically yeah, shaking hands with the two founders of the company that we have acquired. Here is a little bit what we deliver on the right side. Crunchfish is all about that we can reserve something that we can have to spend. Then we can pay and then we can settle. We split it up as three different sort of steps. Here I am at the dinner with uh, the selling shareholders and the two founders in the middle there. We visited Kotak Bank, one of the major banks of, uh, of India. They liked our solution. Mindgate, they have 18 out of 20 of the banks in India, the big banks, for switching. They liked us. Patrick said, don't sit down you know, behind me because you will look like the doll in the ventriloquist. And I, I have to admit, uh, we even dressed sort of uh, for the occasion, really. But that was at Mindgate. Here we are at Paycroft. They are big on doing the, the payment cards. In the transit, I don't know, SL Kortet here in, in Stockholm, they have 98% of the Indian market. We're going to have a partnership with them. We deliver the security on the mobile. They do the card side, and, and that will be a happy partnership. Here is where we found a place uh, to be in Mumbai, the Soho house. Here we are. We are onboarding uh, the people here from uh, the uh, company that we, are, that we acquired. Here is our cozy engineering director, Rutger. Did a one-on-one -on -one with uh, the people there. Here I am with a legend, though. This man here, uh, he was our mentor for the first hackathon of RBI. And um, he has been the director of RBI, uh, the deputy director, for so many years, uh, building up India where it is today. I, I claim that India, uh, they probably do more real-time transactions than all, of, all other countries in the world combined. And, and I think this man had a lot to do with that. Yeah, AWS, uh, Amazon's cloud service that we met, we had a good, good chat. On our web page, you will find this. And as you see, we had one webinar on design in January. The next one is on Friday. Uh, it's uh, on uh, security, and then we're going to have privacy, interoperability, sustainability, and regulatory things. 
we ended all our slides with this one because we told them that we are really on a life journey here. This is, we're not in it for the cash. We really think we're going to do something big for the world because at the end, it doesn't matter how many days you spend working in the office or mowing your lawn. Climb that goddamn mountain. And we actually gave them, a, sort of as a token thing here, as coffee mugs. And, and they, 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 it was really quite appreciated that they got these coffee mugs. And at these trips, you bond a lot. And I have to give this back to Patrick. Here is Patrick and our engineering director. And it, it only reminded me about the lady and the tramp. This, we miss this. This is the most fun uh, holiday they have. This is uh, Holly. We miss it with three days. I was there though, 2020, and this is, I'm gonna introduce Holly to Sweden, come on. Sweden is great on holidays, but we've missed Holly. That's the best one. But I'm gonna end, I'm gonna end uh, this here, uh, and I'm gonna tell a story about why I think the Indians are friendly, nice, have a good sense of humor, and it's, I think it's all about this. Have you been to India? Have you greeted, or do you do yoga? Have you done this? Namaste, have you heard that? Do you know what it means? It means the divine in me salutes the divine in you. That's how they go around and, and look at other people. And I, I have a story about a guy up in the north of Sweden, Omar. He drives a bus. And that guy, he's so good at driving this bus. So people call the bus company and ask, what ride is Omar's ride? And then they book the flight because you want to start with a good, good start, having Omar as your driver. And Omar, he says, I don't, I don't drive a bus. What I do, I take care of people. And they asked Omar, what, how can you be so positive? And Omar says, I look in the mirror every day and I think people are fantastic. Then they are fantastic. One day I tried, I thought to myself, people are idiots. Then they were idiots. And I believe that greeting of India, that they go around and really thinking people are not just fantastic, but they are actually divine, is a good deal with why Indians are a warm and friendly people. I've loved coming to India. It was my fourth trip that you just saw, and I love to come back because now we also have a company in there. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Joachim. Well, as you, I think you mentioned, our the digital payment system, Swish, has had such uh, some really big problems this uh, morning. But do you know how much this uh, costs the for the companies, and what are the effects? I are think it has any, huge uh, ramifications. That uh, um, Swish today in Sweden is. It's a public good, uh, really, and financing is becoming. I know they, they have been already two, three years ago, they were on the banks and saying, we regard Swish as a very society critical service. You need, to, you need to stabilize it. The problem they have is that it will never, ever get stable unless they change the whole philosophy around Swish to become with an offline protocol. Because an offline protocol will be an instant transaction if all the pipes are open. But if it's not open, then it will stop along the way, and then it will transfer later when it becomes available. Yeah. That needs to be implemented in India, in Sweden, all over the world, and we own that technology, I would say. And in India, that seems to be your focus market. They, are, they have the UPE, UPI. UPI, 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 thank you. And as you mentioned also, it's a very, very big and very uh, one of the uh, world's largest uh, payment systems, actually. Uh, just a few days ago, I read that there was a new report that concluded that this, uh, the, the India's digital payment mar markets will more than triple from today, I think $3 trillion US dollars to $10 trillion yeah. uh, in uh, 20 by 2026 yeah so i'm not surprised that you are eager to be there that you will are interested to pr in uh, participating in this market but i would would like to know how come that they are interested in crunchfish such a small swedish company more than just 20 something <laughs> employees uh, what can you offer to big india well, we, we came early. Uh, we were there already, as I said, here, 2020, after we cracked this idea of offline payments. And they were intrigued because they understand they need a design shift from how it's working today to something different. Uh, they, they are talking about actually doing 1.5 billion transactions per day. 
That's what yeah. Swish does per year. That's how big it's going to be in India. <laughs> and you need then to have a design thinking of how do you make that actually stand up? And the solution to that is to chop up things in packages that you can reserve money, I can pay to you, and then whenever things are cleared, then you can make the payment. So you need to have the package-based approach, just like the American told Ericsson, because the payment services, they are in the 80s. They are circuit switch today. It's a circuit. You need to have connection. The bank has to be up. The receiving bank has to be up. All the switches and bank ID. If anything goes wrong, it, it fails. We can't have it like that. We need to have a new design paradigm. And we are doing that worldwide for payments, starting with India, the leading market in the world. Yeah, so can you tell me, I see you have this beautiful shirt, and I'm sure that it, they were appreciating it over there. But what does it take in more concrete terms to make you and your Indian potential partners to really hit it off? Uh, we, we, we are with the largest bank, uh, and we are with IDFC as well, who is a really tech-savvy bank, and, and they are starting now. And they, after being there, they're going to accelerate, I would say. Th this uh, Mr. Pad Manaban, the, the guy who uh, is now a retired, uh, he's retired from RBI, but still very active, and he still has influence, he told us at the last year's uh, hackathon we did that if we like it, we roll it out. And, and I think that we are getting close to that RBI will say, yes, roll it out. Because I think they want digitization. That's huge in India. They so want that to work. When can we expect something to, that you can show us some uh, agreements? It's, or? We already we used it when we were there. Uh, it's, it's, it's up and running right now, and it's, it's a pilot under the supervision of, of RBI. But we also have now, we have MindGate, uh, who wants to get involved with us. We have Paycraft, we have, there's so many others, Kotak Bank. So it's, it's happening all over the place. So how closely? Uh, yeah, we, we are negotiating. I, I, I think it's, it's actually yeah. quite funny because HDFC, the largest bank, has already launched the service to their shareholders, to their users, to everybody. But they haven't yet set the price with us, which I don't think is at their advantage because w I, I don't think they can now go back. Okay. I, I won't take advantage of them, but we will establish some sort of good pricing in that model. Let's talk just a little bit more about your business model. I understand that your revenues, they, they will consist or they do consist in A, upfront uh, payment, and B, uh, uh, royalties. Well, it, it's, it's, it's per use. It's just like a subscription a model. Just like you, you today pay for your credit card. Uh, you, you pay for that service. In the same way, uh, we will get per app, per user, per year, a fee. And that could be, I think, think of a dollar. If they put it in every single app, every single user, one dollar per year, everybody can afford that, and then all of a sudden they get a stable service. But there is a hell of a lot of apps out there, so and that creates a lot exactly of money. Exactly what are you selling? We, we are selling the, the trust that you always can pay. Today, they only can pay it's designed, all the payment services today is designed to only work when everything works. Yeah. We are selling basically the insurance that it will work every time. We, that's what we, we are selling. And that's why you want to have that. Then if it is something that you will pay as a user or if the payment service will absorb that cost in order to stabilize their payment service. That, that could be, it's up to them really. Okay. You have, uh, earlier you have talked about a lot about uh, potential uh, business with the Visa and MasterCard, and we have a viewer here that would like to address that area. And the question is, could you explain the Visa partnership? Yeah, we, we came into a partnership with Visa, and that was already back in, uh, I think it was end of 2020. We were a little bit too far from Visa. Yeah. However, now, when we have um, improved on our product, and a little bit also change the pro how we designed it. I think we are much closer. If, if you look at the participation at our, at our webinar that we're going to do on Friday, there are really senior people, n probably not from Visa, but from MasterCard is there. And I think we are now with a service that these big guys, Visa, MasterCard, can offer to the banks as one solution coming from us. That's also why it was so important for us to acquire this company in India, because now we have what is called a full stack solution, not just the front end piece, but also the back end piece. Now we have, we have the whole solution, and that makes it easier for Visa and MasterCard to go ahead with our solution. Okay, thank you. Another question from the audience. What's your view on IT security, and how do you protect your infrastructure? IT security is key. Uh, we're yeah. going to have a whole webinar on Friday discussing it on offline payment security. And it's a white paper coming out on 
Thursday, uh, out of Leapy's advisor, read that. Uh, but it's absolutely key. You can't have a payment service without top-notch security. Yeah. Uh, and uh, last but not the least, the financial situation of today. Can you just, uh, what is your, can you conclude a little bit on your Yeah, we, we, we have announced already back in uh, November that we have a, um, it's a telecom partnership that they have they have agreed to uh, where we have signed a memorandum of understanding that they should buy three million shares at market from crunchfish um, th that was three months was uh, actually at the end of february so now we're a little bit into march it's still going ahead uh, i talked to them quite uh, sort of weekly and that will actually finance up right now as we are trading around sort of 30 I think times three, that's 90 million into Crunchfish, and that's much more money than we need. Okay. Uh, but but uh, that is what, what I'm, I'm counting on, that that will sort of uh, strengthen the whole uh, cash situation from us. Thank you. Joachim. Yeah. Namaste. <laughs> Namaste. <laughs> Namaste. Thank you so much.